Richie, as a total newcomer, how challenging was to tune your frequency with Matthew McConaughey's, an Oscar-winning actor? Um, not that hard, you know. Mm. I just, I just try to be natural, you know. Try to be me, you know. Stay real and have fun. Have as much fun as we can. And those things right there are some of the components of good acting, but not easy to do. You know, exactly. to be a newcomer who pops in, not in a small little role, a full lead movie, <laughs> oh and in front of cameras, to be able to be natural. In front of 80 people who are all looking at you, you're on, to, to respect where you, where, you, where you are, but not have such a reverence that you're nervous. And, and you know, if you had nerves, you didn't, you didn't show them. Um, so he had, he had the confidence to be himself. And then, um, that's, if you can do that. <laughs> Matthew, how deep commitment in your craft pays back and what is the advice that you would give to this talented newcomer? Well, keep doing, and you can keep going deeper into working on those things. Get to know yourself. Keep getting to know yourself, how you feel about things. When I said, remember to write, write down things that, that you think are funny that no one else laughed at. <laughs> write down things that make you cry that no one else cries at. And trust those, just because the rest of the people don't do it, go, no, that's how I feel. Because that's how you'll be, remain Richie. That's how you'll be an original. That's how there's gonna be no, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, there's no carbon copy of yourself. You know what I mean? They can never be two of them. Yeah. To prepare for the film, you and the director visited uh, West Jury in prison where he has been for almost 30 years. How was that experience? Did you have the chance to talk to him also? He talked to him a lot. He didn't meet him, but he talked to him a lot. I got to talk to him a lot. He got to meet him. How was that? Um, you know, he was, he was a real cool guy, you know? He was just like a, just a regular guy. He would just, you know, bump into a supermarket, have a cool conversation about cars, you know, family. He was just really, really cool, you know? Do you feel that through this film you open a dialogue about the sentence that was an odd law back then and this guy has been in prison for all his life almost? Yeah, I mean, the dialogue, I think, has already started. Because mm -hmm. um, if you look at the, the, the crime in the sentence, the math doesn't add up um, for how long Rick, where she's been in jail for the crime he committed. And all the people who committed larger crimes sold larger amounts who got out long before he did. Yes. So the math didn't really add up. It also, I think, is a little bit of a, a lesson in people's cases that it makes me wonder how many cases are kind of overlooked out there. That. Like this one. Did this, did, did, did you know, what they brought attention to this one? There's no spotlight exactly. on these cases. No, because there's a really lot of people without a spotlight on a case mm -hmm. where if someone maybe just looked at, looked deeper into it, really took a, you know, or how many, because you've got to figure to some people that people that are in, they're just a number, you know, to people, there's nothing, there's nothing personal about them uh, to the people who may be looking, who could have something to do with their parole. So just to have a closer look. Um, there's a lot of people that, that haven't had it. Matthew, you seem to have the freedom of choice to do the roles that you really like to do. How inspiring and, and relieving is that for an actor? Uh, I mean, very inspiring. I, I mean, I've been doing it 26 years now. So I have more of a handle on what, uh, what I'm looking for, what turns me on. The beginning of my career, I would have done anything. I didn't have it as much of an identity of, of what turned me on. I would have been like, I'm just happy to be here. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I, well, whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll do any of them. And then, you know, and then with success comes more choice and discernation of being able to make choices and create things for yourself. And I'm happy and privileged to be in that position. Um, I don't feel like protecting it. I feel like just putting more fuel on that fire and saying, let me grow with the roles that I do and keep choosing the experience that turns me on. And Richie, what would you like to say to the audience about this film? What is the message of the film? Mm -hmm. um, you know, this film got a nice, a nice family-based story behind it. You know, you got the Curry crew and you got uh, Rick Warshi and his family. Tell them what you said though earlier about, that, about, about if you got a chance to talk to your mother, talk to a family member. Oh like, yeah, yeah, you know, um, what I hope the audience gets from it is like, you know, the respect for one another. You know, like say, if you was to talk to your mom and that was your last conversation with her, would you be satisfied with that? 
So it's like more about family in this movie because like Rick wanted a, a family to call his. He wanted somebody that was gonna have his back, somebody that he can love unconditionally no matter what happens. You know, it, it, he, that's what he found in the Curry crew. He found his boys that had his back, but also had his father that was trying to be his friend. And you know, he, he loved his father, he loved his sister, and he loved his parents, he loved them. Well, look how fragile it is, look what happened. Yeah. Son got taken away. 